Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of Team Minus 365. In today's episode, I'm going to be covering Privileged Identity Management, or PIM, from Microsoft Azure Active Directory. PIM is a solution that you can use here to provide just-in-time and just-enough access that does allow you to manage all of the role assignments in your organization. Essentially here, you're helping reduce your attack surface by giving a model of least privilege to all users where they have the ability to activate a more elevated role for a specific period of time and they can give a justification reason for activating that role as well too so they have complete documentation. I'm here as an administrator and I can go in and I can actually go into the Azure AD roles here and I can actually assign eligibility for a particular role. So I may want to assign the user administrator role to a certain user. So I can click on them here and I can click on add assignments and I can select a member as well. I'll go ahead and select Alex here. And I'll click on next. From here, you're able to say that they are eligible, meaning that they can activate this and they can do that for a temporary period of time and then they're deactivated, which is a recommended setting. Otherwise active is just permanently assigning them that role. You can also have this role eligible for a certain duration if you wanted to, or permanently eligible. So that is to say, maybe for this week, you allow them to become this user administrator and they have access to do certain organizational changes for employees. And then after that, they don't have access to activate this role any longer. So you have that ability to customize that if you really want to, but then ultimately you can assign this as well here too. And this is giving you the ability to have a list of all your users that have this assignment and see that over time. In the role settings here, you can see that there's quite a bit that you can configure, but essentially here you could define the maximum duration time that you have. You could require a justification region. You could require approvers to approve that action to elevate their privilege if you wanted that as well too as a secondary layer of auditing in the use case where you have so many users doing this you may want that second layer or maybe it's a certain role that has so many privileges that you would want to have a certain approval list to do so and so i'm not going to be going through all of these settings here today but this is a list that you'll get on every single role that you may have within the organization there and then back on this particular page if you do get that approve request you have the approve request in the sense of them being completed here and then you have the pending request as well too. Let's go ahead and pop into Alex, as in the user that I just assigned this role to, so I can see what they see in their view as well too. So I'm here as Alex, and I can go into the Privilege Identity Management section after I log in, and I have the ability to see my roles here. And I've been assigned four different roles, and here you can see that I'm a password administrator, user administrator, global administrator, and cloud app security administrator. So all of these have been assigned to me and all I can activate at any time. Say I want to go ahead and activate this role as far as the user administrator. And then I have some settings I can define here as well, which is basically saying that I could have a custom start time that I want to set this at. Maybe I know at 3 o'clock today, that's when I'm going to start to do my user management. So that's when I would want this role to start. I can assign the duration that I think that I'll need as well for this role. And ideally, you would want to educate your users to do a model of least privilege again and the least time frame that they would potentially need while also not being intrusive or getting to a tedious point where they have to go and reactivate this role again. And then you could add a reason here, the justification reason for adding this. So adding users to AD and you can click on activate. For that description, I'd also educate users to be as descriptive as possible. Uh, a lot of cases I see organizations kind of abusing that field, just having very light messaging there, which kind of defeats the purpose of the justification region. And as you can see there, it went through some checks to basically go ahead and assign this role. And then it automatically switches my session token so that I'm logged in and have the rights as the user administrator. Previously, they had it where you had to log out and sign back in, which was really tedious, but they made that a really streamlined process here as well too. So now I have the user administrator role and I can go in and I have rights to go ahead and create users or modify existing users that are cloud-based. And that role wasn't possible to me before I activated this. 
and it will expire in that three hour window that I saw there previously as well too. So if I pop back in and go back to my roles here, you'll see that I've activated this and if I go under active assignments, I'll have these and they, they both are active today. You could actually deactivate one of those roles here as well and just move yourself back out into your base level role, which in most cases is just going to be a user level. So that's everything that I wanted to showcase for you guys today for privilege identity management. Stay tuned for the next lesson. We'll be going through access controls here, which is an extension of privilege identity management where you can actually periodically review those access rights that users have in your organization. Thanks guys. Have a great day.